Scientific notation, which is also called exponential notation, is a method that we have for writing numbers that are either very, very large or very, very small. So we're going to look at examples of very small numbers and also very large. Now we're not talking about, when we say small numbers, we're not talking about very negative numbers. We're talking about numbers that are just small. They might be negative, they might be positive, but their magnitude is small. So let's do point six zeros and then seven nine, and let's say that this is meters. And that's gonna be our example of a very small number. And for our large number, let's do 79 with six zeros. Make that also meters. The problem that we have with these numbers that are very small or very large, uh, whether they're negative or positive, is irrelevant. We're just looking at the magnitude of these numbers. The problem that we have is all of these zeros in introduce the likelihood that we will make an error when we are copying this number from one source to another. Let's say you're copying this number into your notes or you're copying this number into a lab notebook or something. The chances are high that you might miss a zero or add an extra zero. Maybe not so much with this number because it only has six zeros on it and that's not that hard to deal with, but what if I put even more zeros on this number? And you need to copy this number down and don't mess it up. What if there were like 20 zeros on there? It becomes harder to, get to um, ensure that you're going to get the number correct. So in order to decrease the possibility of us making a mistake when we copy this number, we will write our numbers in scientific notation instead of writing them in this form. And scientific notation basically just eliminates all those placeholder zeros so that we don't have to worry about miscounting them. So let's go through the process of writing a small number in scientific notation. The first thing that we have to do is find the decimal point in the number, which shouldn't be hard to do. And then what we're going to do is move that decimal point until it is to the right side of the first non-zero digit. So let's write down that step. We are going to move the decimal to the right of the first non-zero digit. And as we move that decimal point, we're going to count how many spaces it takes or how many spaces it moves. So this decimal point is going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces to get to the right side of the seven, which is our first non-zero digit. So let's just kind of make a note of that. We moved seven spaces in this case. And we moved seven spaces to the right in the right hand direction to get to that to get to that special spot. When we move our decimal point over here, and now the decimal point is going to be in this position, so let's write that down. It's going to look like this. We no longer have a need for any of these zeros out here. It wouldn't make sense to put zeros in the front like that. So we get rid of those zeros in our notation, and we multiply that 7.9 times 10 raised to the negative 7 power. This 10 to the negative 7 is communicating or indicating the magnitude of the number and the number of spaces that we had to move the decimal point. Multiplying it times 10 to the negative 7 doesn't change the value of the number. So these two numbers have the exact same numerical value. They're equal to each other. But as you can imagine, this is a really easy number to copy, and it would be much harder to screw this number up than um, this number up here. So we moved the we moved the decimal point seven spaces to the right. We copied down the seven and everything that was to the right of it. We eliminated all of these zeros in our notation and we multiplied it by an exponent that reflected the number of spaces that we moved. What about if we're dealing with a very large number? So again, the first thing we have to do is find that decimal point. The decimal point is not being shown in this number, but we all know that the decimal point is right here. We are, again, even though this is a large number, we are still going to move the decimal to the right side of the first non-zero digit. 
So we're doing the exact same thing. Move the decimal to the right of the first non-zero digit. When I say first, I mean like as you read the number from left to right, the first digit that you come to that's not a zero. So again, our first non-zero digit is a seven. Our decimal point is right here. When we move it to the right, it's going to be right there. Again, it's going to be 7.9. Um, in this case, we are moving, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six, again, seven spaces. But this time we moved to the left. So here we moved seven spaces to the left. So we are going to multiply our 7.9. And again, we, we copy the 7.9. We eliminate all those excess zeros, just like we did over here. We just keep these non-zero digits. 7.9, we multiply by 10 to the 7, positive 7 this time. And again, that exponent is reflecting the number of spaces that we had to move. So let's make a note of this, that when we move the decimal to the left, or excuse me, to the right, when we move the decimal to the right, that would be because we have a small number and when we have a small number, we have a negative exponent. When we move the decimal to the left, that means that we are dealing with a large number and we have a positive exponent. So this is how, is kind of a very quick introduction of how you can take a non-scientific notation number and convert it into scientific notation. We're going to practice this over and over again. So I'm not going to do more examples in this video because we're just going to be doing more examples in all of the following videos for quite a while. So you'll see a lot of examples with this. But keep this information handy because this is going to be useful to you. Now let's uh, move on to the next topic. What if we have a scientific notation number and we want to convert it back into the standard form? So if we're starting like this and we want to convert it into this, we're actually not going to talk about how to do that because that's not a useful thing for us in science. This is the form that we want our numbers in. So when we're converting, we're converting from non-scientific notation into scientific notation. And this method always makes us happy. So we'll just keep our numbers in this notation all the time. The last thing that I want to talk about is how you will enter these numbers into your calculator, which is also something that we're going to practice quite a bit. But let me pull my calculator up. If some students have a hard time correctly entering these numbers into their calculator. So your calculator needs to be a scientific notation calculator. It doesn't need to be a graphing calculator, just needs to be scientific notation. You'll know it's a scientific notation calculator if you can find a button that says EE, like that button that I just hit and it turned blue. That's the button that you need to have on your calculator or Sometimes instead of the EE -E button, they have an EXP button. Now your calculator almost certainly has a 10 to the X button. You are not going to use that button at all ever. The EE -E or the EXP button are the buttons that we use to enter scientific notation. So let's practice entering in 7.9 times 10 to the minus 7 in our calculator. We'll start by entering the 7.9 part, so 7.9, and then don't be tempted to hit that multiplication button. That's not what we want to do. Let me get rid of that. The EE button represents times 10 to the. So we are going to enter 7.9 and then we're going to enter EE because that represents times 10 to the, and then we're going to enter in the rest of this um, number, negative seven. Let me find my negative sign, negative seven. So this 7.9 EE negative seven, that's calculator speak for 7.9 times 10 to the minus seven. 
And we can confirm that we've done this correctly just by hitting enter, and that's going to turn that into the decimals, and you can count how many zeros are displaying on that calculator screen. You can see there's six, six zeros up there, so we know that we've done this correctly. If you had tried to squeeze in a 10 to the whatever in this equation, you would have ended up with the wrong number of zeros up here. Let's practice entering in. Let's go back, clear that, and let's do the same thing over here with our large number. 7.9 times 10 to the 7. How would we enter that into the calculator? So again, we want to hit 7.9, and then we want to hit our EE or EXP. So maybe you have an EXP button. So I'll write that underneath, 7.9 EXP. And then we're going to hit 7. This time is positive, so we don't need to find the negative button. And if we want to check our work, we can hit Enter and see that it's got all of the correct number of zeros, just like what we're looking for. Now, now you're not always going to be able to display all of the zeros on your calculator. So let's say we have a huge number, like 7.9 times 10 to the 20. It's just gonna keep it in scientific notation. It's not gonna put all those zeros for you. And for whatever reason, this calculator changes the EE -E to a little e. Um, I don't know why. Yours may do that, yours may not. If you are feeling kind of rusty about entering these numbers into your calculator, that's another thing don't worry about because we're gonna be practicing it a lot in the next um, few, many few videos.